Hello friends, I realized I did not film the talking portion of this video, so we're hanging out on the couch today in our renovated living room, or about to be renovated living room. But if you are looking for better ways to find great craft markets for your products, this video is for you. I've spent a lot of years of doing trial and error, of just figuring out what shows work for me. And this is the list of things I now look for when scouting a new market or just seeing if a show or market is gonna fit my products personally. So let's go into it, let's jump in. All right, so if you don't have this already, please start it as you're watching this video, but you're gonna start a show list. This is a great way to stay organized. I keep mine in like a Google Sheets, but basically you're gonna have the name of the show, the date it normally runs on. I like to have the city and how far away it is from me so I know how far I'm traveling for that show and the fee. So those are four important things that I think are great to just catalog. So you have a list of shows that you can look at when you're doing your yearly planning of what's coming up for your business. I also have a note on my phone for when other makers or business owners tell me about shows that I'll quickly jot down and then look up when I get home from the show to add it to that Excel sheet. But I think it's better to stay organized and get organized now. That way, as you start building into bigger and better shows, you have the list. So number one, how is that show marketing for you to bring people to that show? What are you paying your vendor fee for? And first thing I look at is social. So for the example we're gonna run through today, it's called Old Luckett Store is their social, but the um, show that we visit is their Luckett Spring Market. Um, they also do a market in the fall and in the holiday, so I just wanted to see if this was gonna be a good fit for me to start entering. And checking out their socials, you can see they do a great job of posting almost daily, if not every day. There was a Facebook event for the market which had disappeared by the time I looked to film this video and put it all together but they had a couple thousand people that said they were going on Facebook plus they have a big following with a lot of engagement as well followers don't mean anything if they're not getting the engagement but they're having a ton of shares and um, comments on their photos so I'd love to see that on Facebook and same thing for Instagram posting every single day you can kind of get a good feel of of the vibe that this store puts out. Um, I would say it's a very vintage, rustic farmhouse kind of vibe, which can fit with my stuff depending on the customer in the market. And their slogan is vintage hip, which I thought was really fun. So as far as looking at socials, I thought this show had a great potential to be somewhere I would want to be and want to see my products. So that's why we decided to take the trip and check it out. Number two is going to be if you can physically scout the market, that is the best option. Obviously that's not always attainable if you're spending weekends doing shows, but this video is gonna be all about what I'm personally looking for when I go out to scout a market. So first thing I'm looking for when I'm there is traffic, which this show did an amazing job we got there right at open and there was a long line. They did a great job of getting people through the ticket area and it was so cute. Like the fact that they put so much effort into creating an experience and a feeling as you're walking in made me so, so excited to just like enter the show, which is great if you're a vendor there because your customers are excited, they're having fun and they're ready to shop. Second thing I look for when I'm at a market are what are the price points. Um, for me, my prices can range anywhere from like $30 to $600, $700 of items that I bring to shows. So for me, I just wanna make sure that that fits my price range. There's not gonna be a ton of cheap things there or there's not like only high-end things there, which this market did do a great job of as well. 
there was um, vintage things that you could find for around like the $20, $30 price range. And then there was even tables and furniture that went into the thousands. So I don't think that my price points would scare people away if it was something that they fell in love with since there was other very high-end pieces and more expensive pieces all over the park, not just at one or two vendors. Number three, does their vibe that they're portraying on social really match the aesthetic that is at the show? And I would say 100% yes for this. All right, first impressions, love the vibe. I have not made it to like the homemade, handmade stuff yet, um, but everything here is so cute. Like a lot of vintage, it's like a mix of wholesale vintage and maybe like some handmade. There was a ton of vintage, um, also some wholesale farmhousey things that were obviously a little bit cheaper because they were wholesale. A good range of different feels of vendors from like true farmhouse to more like eclectic boho vintage finds, furniture, home decor, pottery, all types of different things. So I would say 100% yes, this fit the vintage hip vibe that they were going for and had a little bit of something for everyone if you're looking for that like vintagey feel. All right, and last thing, if you are scouting a show, please, please, please make sure you talk to vendors that are there. Get a feel for how they are feeling being a vendor at the show. What has their experience been so far? What have their sales been so far? Everyone has a good definition of a good show for them, and mine has really changed as my business has grown, but it's really important to just feel out how being a vendor there would feel. So did I decide to go to this market or not? The answer is no. And the reason why was because I saw maybe a handful, like less than 10 of makers that were only selling all handmade stuff. There was some vendors where you could tell they handmade some stuff, they wholesaled some stuff and it was like a mix or same thing with like vintage curated finds. They may have made some, but they are mixing in vintage, which I think is a great idea for this show. But my stuff is completely 100% handmade. I don't buy any wholesale as of right now, anything like that. So um, for me, where my business is right now, I do not think this show is a good fit, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't scout the show. And that's why doing this is so, so important. It's gonna save you time, the money of a fee, which I know for this show is a little bit higher. And it's gonna save a disappointment of dragging all your stuff out there and maybe not having the weekend that you think you should. So that's why scouting is so important. That's why looking at all of these things are so, so important. So I wish you the best of luck in your show journey. And if you have any questions about the marketing, about how else to scout things at a show, please drop them in the comments. I would be more than happy to share what I've experienced through these four years of doing shows. All right, until next time, bye.